All right, so in this video, we are going to be practicing mixing tempera paints to make uh, our own color wheel. So at the end, we're gonna end up with something like this with just some small circles of colors just for um, a quick practice. We are going to include our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, our secondary colors, orange, green, and purple, and our intermediate colors or tertiary colors, red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, and red, violet. And at the end, you're going to label them and end up with something like this. So you can do this um, a few different ways. Um, you could put down your primary colors first, your red, yellow, and blue, and just get those right onto your paper. I find that um, a few extra steps for me because then I'm just going to have to keep um, washing my paintbrush more than I would unless if I don't go in kind of more of a circle pattern. So. This is the way I do it. If something else works for you in a different way, um, that's okay as long as you're ending up with that same um, end product or something somewhat close. So first thing I'm going to do, I like to start with red and I'm going to put my red circle on there. Pretty simple, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be perfectly circular. You could make squares if you want or a different shape, but um, I'm thinking circles are gonna be pretty easy. The second thing I'm going to do, um, I kind of have this color wheel here to reference back if I need to, and I have a few extra copies of these that we could put at your table if uh, you like having that visual right in front of you. But I'm going to skip the red-orange because I find it easier to find my red-orange after I have my orange. So I'm going to go from red and then make my orange circle and then come back to that um, intermediate color afterwards. So when I'm making orange, I know that red is a lot stronger color than yellow. So I'm gonna need more yellow than red to make orange. So what I do is add the yellow first, and I already have that red in my paintbrush, so it might be um, even close to enough almost to make that orange. And then I'm just gonna be kind of looking for um, a good orange color that's not too close to yellow and not too close to red and somewhere in between. So that red is a lot stronger color, so I feel like I just made it too red. So now I'm gonna eat, need to add yellow back in. Just kind of a trial and error here. But what happens if it gets way too red? It's gonna take so much yellow to tone it back down to orange. So you might just wanna uh, start over in a different spot if yours ends up getting way too red and it's taking uh, a really long time to get it closer to orange with that yellow. So I'm going to try that because that looks pretty in between to me. And then I'm just going to get that circle onto my paper. And then once I have my yellow, or my red and my orange, I feel like it's easier for me to find that red orange now in between. And since I already have the orange made, I might just take a little of it um, and put it in this other spot right here and then just add a tiny, tiny bit of red to it to see if I can kind of make that red-orange color. And we'll try that. Once you put it on your paper, if it's not looking um, the best, you always could just dip a little bit more and finish mixing it on your paper, or you could always just let it dry and try again in a little bit once it dries. But I'm thinking that looks pretty good from in between my red and my orange. My next step is going to be adding my yellow so then I can find that yellow orange in between. Um, for you, you'll probably just have one paintbrush so you'll just clean them out in between, clean them out in between. But for some time's sake, I'm just going to switch paintbrushes here to a yellow, one for yellow. And I'm going to put my yellow circle on there and leave room for that orange or that yellow orange in between. And there's my yellow. So same with making the orange when I need to make um, my yellow orange, I know that yellow is a little weaker, so I'm going to start with that, adding that yellow first, and making sure I get enough of that in there to begin with. And then I might come over to my orange and just grab a little bit of it, not too much, or it'll, you're better off just adding slowly. You can always add more, but if you add too much, um, it's really hard to go backwards. And then I'm going to um, actually, I feel like maybe I could add just a tiny bit more, and we'll try that. So there's my uh, yellow-orange in between my orange and my yellow. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is make my green. 
Um, so I'm going to take another paintbrush and I'm going to uh, mix my yellow and my blue to make green. So once again, yellow is a weak color, so I'm going to start with that yellow first, make sure I get enough of that in there, and then I'm going to just barely grab a little bit of blue and start mixing it in. I feel like that's still a little more lime colored than I'm needing, so I need just a tiny bit more blue. I can always keep adding more. I feel like that might be closer to what we want. So I'm gonna put my green circle down. And now I'm gonna go back and make that color in between that yellow green. So once again, I'm gonna take some yellow, I'll put it over here. I already have a lot of green on my brush, so it honestly might just make that color for me. And it looks like it is. I didn't even have to do anything. I already had the green on my brush, dipped it in yellow, and now I have my yellow green, kind of like a lime green right in between those two colors. All right, next step is my blue primary color. So all we're doing is just taking the paint that is on my um, palette here. There's my blue. And then I'm going to go back and make that blue green. So it's going to be kind of a teal color. Um, so I'm going to put some blue over here. And then I'm going to take some of that green that I already made, but I might have to add a little bit more yellow maybe. So to make that green, I used a little bit of yellow. So I might just steal just a tad bit of yellow over to kind of make that a little greener and less blue. I'm gonna try that out for a teal. Scoot that up so you can all see it. There's my uh, blue green right in between my blue and my green. And now my last uh, few colors here, I'm going to be trying to make purple. Um, I'm going to pre-warn you that these colors, this blue and this red, don't make the best um, violet or purple color. It's kind of a little darker than um, usual, but it's just kind of what you get with such a dark blue when you're mixing with. So we'll just have to um, do what we can with it. So I'm going to take some blue, add it into my circle, add a little bit of red. I feel like this one's just a little harder to see if you're getting the right color. It's really just going to be a, a trial and error of kind of adding a little bit of blue, a little bit of red until you feel like it's um, not too maroonish and not too blue. So I'm going to try, try that. I think that's a pretty good um, purple for now. And now I'm going to make my blue purple. So sometimes I just use a um, paper towel and kind of just wipe off a little of the extra if I feel like I have too much of my brush instead of wiping it off all the time. And then since I'm trying to make blue purple, I'm just going to use that same purple circle and I'm just going to add a little bit extra blue into it. And I'm slowly adding it so that I don't overdo it and have to backtrack. And we'll try, try that for a blue purple. I know it's pretty dark, especially from what you're seeing on the video, but um, that should be pretty close. And then our last one is going to be that uh, red violet. So I'm going to just clean my brush off barely because I kind of have all the same colors that I need on my paintbrush anyway. I'm gonna go back into that red, make sure I add a good amount of red into there and I'm going to steal some of this purple that we already made and hope, hoping for more of like a maroonish color since it's a little closer to the red than the blue. And now I have my red violet. So my circle didn't end up perfect, but you can still see that it is a, a color wheel. I have all my primary colors, secondary colors, and intermediate colors on there. You could always come back and look and see if um, there's a certain one that you feel like maybe you didn't go 
just as well as it could have and you could always wait for it to dry and go over it again. Otherwise, this is really uh, just for practice. So if it's not 100% uh, per perfect, that's okay. But what I ask you to do after you get the colors on, you could do it before if you want, but once it kind of starts drying and you can write on it, take a pen or pencil marker, something that you can label those different colors on so that you always have this as a reference. We could, once it dries, you could put it in your sketchbook. Um, so anytime you're painting, you could always come back to this as a reference for uh, color mixing and it'll just be some really good practice before we get going on painting projects.